Betaflight recently added position holder into the upcoming release of Betaflight 4.6 which is still in development, but you can flash it if you want to use it and test it. Before we get all excited about it, let's check out what Precision Hold can do. Uh, get it out there. I'm just going to go right into Position Hold. There we go. So in Position Hold, I have it set, and it's oddly enough, you can do two things. You, have to, you can have it in Position Hold without Altitude Hold. Um, but you can see here, this is Position Hold with Altitude Hold. Uh, and obviously you can do altitude hold without position hold as well. So it's really up to you. Um, in INAV, for example, that's not a choice. If you're in position hold, you are in altitude hold, period. Um, which I would think is what you want anyways. But nevertheless, you can choose in beta flight. To move the craft around, uh, you can see here, I can just move the sticks and it will go into angle mode. It is always going to have that kind of overshoot because it literally goes into angle mode. Then when you let go, it's gonna flip in that position hold mode and then grab its position. But it's not too bad. Um, another thing that's uh, in the code that's a little different is if you just drop the throttle all the way to zero, it's not gonna decrease in throttle. You'd have to be slightly above zero throttle to actually uh, have it, you know. So if I go up, you can see it will go up. Three, if I go five, down, five. you can see it will go down. But if I just go in the middle, it's going to uh, turn that off. If I go all the way down, it's not. It's just going to hold its altitude there. That's a little different. So one thing that you'll also see is if you go side to side, you're going to see it drop uh, in altitude. Like if I go back and forth here, you'll see it. See how it drops and springs back up. That is not the controller or the software that is your barometer the pressure um changes the pressure must go down uh, on the barometer as it goes it has that air going across it which then tells it it's raising an altitude so it drops the quad so that's a input sensor issue more than anything so when you see that or if you you know don't want that how you can see it's going down there that's really just a sensor issue more than anything so um, don't be thinking that's a tuning issue that's a sensor see how it's going way down now when I stop it it bounces up to its altitude so it does really well um, as you can see just in a steady state uh, if I bring this down a little bit ooh, a little bit of a drop there if I bring that and just hold it there it does pretty good I would say for its altitude hold uh, and position hold. So, hands off, kind of new option in beta flight that you can take a little break, set it in a position hold, and uh, it will hold it there. I would think that's super helpful for cine lifter folks that just want to hold position while they're waiting for uh, the go so they don't have to be on the sticks all the time. You can see it's not perfect, went down there a little bit, but if you're up. You know, you're probably not going to be hovering right above the ground. Uh, then you're in good shape. My battery's actually getting a little low too. So after that's done, of course, we're going to flip it out of both of those. And then you have to want to be on the sticks there a little bit. And you might expect, uh, expect some uh, changes there with altitude. So just be cautious about that, depending on where you have your throttle set uh, and all that kind of jazz. But you know, caught, obviously then I can just flip an altitude hold and then position hold. Now we're in a position hold. And I don't know why it do dove down there. I think that was me, but yep. Well, that's all fine and good when we're just hovering there, but what if we're doing a little bit more dynamic moves? What if we're really pushing it forward in angle mode and then just letting the sticks go and does it hold a lock? What if we're inverted and we just switch it into position hold? What does it do there? So let's look at it. So one big question I had uh, with this is, let me check out position hold. You can see, ooh, not too great. It's probably getting a little bit better HDOP. So there's my position hold after it kind of found itself. Let's see how it goes with when I move forward. 
can see. One thing I've noticed with this, uh, now I'm looking under the, the goggles, it's it's smoother so than iNav. iNav, um, you can get a very jerky position hold just because of the way it uses the accelerometer data. And I'm not sure if Data Flight's doing that differently. You can work it out with iNav, but um, this is a pretty smooth position hold and you can see it fighting the wind there. Uh, so I do have some a little bit of breeze here. And you can see how it will drop down. Drops down because that uh, that uh, barometer data, but then doesn't do too bad. It picks it back up, gets where it needs to be, and it's it's a I mean it's pretty freaking good, man. Um, for a position hold, especially when you're on the gauze. Yeah, it drops down. Uh, and there when you start getting off course there a little bit, when you get all oh gosh. There can get you. So I, I think the next thing I want to know, and I think I already know the answer. So here, what it does is, so when you actually move the sticks, it takes you out of position hold, right? Now I'm flying acro or angle mode at this point. And then when I take my finger off the stick, then it it's going to go into position hold. It like uh, picks a coordinate, locks it. So the other big question I had is when I'm um, flying around acro type style and do something like this and flip it into position hold how does it do and notice I dropped it I have the throttle drop so that's kind of a good uh, thing it's not doing great on position hold though at all so flip that out of position hold that was going off to never never land somewhere so that's probably not great. So let's uh, just get it out here, calm it down a little bit, and then flip it in. And then there, it's not too bad. But, oh, 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 oh where are you going, buddy? I don't know if I had the stick down it was dropping because of that or not. So there, we're not bad. But if I do a big dynamic move, let's see that. Not that it's that big of a dynamic move, but let's, So it was inverted and triggered position hold. How does it do? Got the throttle dropped all the way to zero. It does not do great. It was starting to go over to never, never land. So you gotta be cautious about that. It seems like you almost wanna be sitting still. It will flip you back over, but then you're going off to never, never land. So don't do that. Um, looks like for now you need to kind of be in a position it's pretty freaking cold out today you know if I get to a spot kind of level off and then I can even then you just got to watch a little bit of toilet bowl in there and then you can kind of get out of position hold right by by moving the sticks because now I'm in angle mode right so I'm gonna go up a little bit and obviously with all this we're keeping in mind this is this is v1 right so now now i'm okay right so like big dynamic drastic moves um if you flip it into position hold you're probably going off to never never land you better flip it out of position hold pretty quick um but when you get a steady state and put it into position hold it's pretty you know it's not very shaky so that's pretty good so my best hunch with that is it has to do with the accelerometer. Just like if you're flying a whoop inside and you hit the couch, it gets kind of drunk for a little bit. I think when you're doing big dynamic moves or uh, just some fast uh, flying or something, maybe that uh, the accelerometer, you know, knowing where the gravity vector is pointing down is a little off. And maybe that needs a little bit more attention or work to see if that can be made any better. But you probably want to know if I want to check this out, how can I flash this to my flight controller? So you'd go to the apps.betaflight.com website. It's going to use Google Chrome or Edge. And then from there, you're going to do expert, you do all the check boxes like I have shown here. Uh, in my experience with this, you have to press the, B, the 
bootloader button or whatever on your flight controller, then plug it into USB so it's in DFU mode right off the bat, and then you'd click this no reboot sequence. Mileage may vary. Maybe other people, maybe that's just me with my flight controller. I'm uh, doing a lot of this stuff with the same flight controller, SpeedyB F7 V4. Uh, nevertheless, you click development here, you pick your board, then come down into here, options you are going to need. You're gonna want altitude hold uh, mode in there, I would think. Uh, you will probably also want to have magnetometer as well. You will work a little bit better with a magnetometer integrated into your GPS unit, but is not required. There's a um, use mag off option in the CLI. In the near future, you will probably also see up here something that relates to position hold, and you would just pick that here as well. But for now, what you're going to type in down here is pause underscore hold underscore mode. That also may change to position underscore hold. Just that, not pause hold mode, just position underscore hold. Uh, shortly after this PR uh, gets merged, which uh, I would think is going to be within the next week. So it's probably going to be position underscore hold, and all I would say within a week or two. And I would further say that probably in a week or two as well, you're probably just going to be able to select it in that pull down box. Once that is done down here, you hit load firmware, which is right there and that will build it for your specific flight controller down here. And when it's built, you will hit this flash firmware button right there. Now, this is a good time I'm gonna remind you, and there's gonna be other prompts that reminds you that this is development firmware right now, so use at your own risk. This should be for testing or just curiosity's sake. You know, I don't know if I would be really putting it in a kind of production rig, but that's up to you, uh, you're a big boy. Uh, seems to work fairly decent, but uh, again, this is still a development build. We're not at the stable release yet for Betaflight 4.6. Once that is all done, you just get your flight controller all set up. I would recommend before flashing, you'd save a diff and then you can reload that back in. If you don't know how to do that, you probably shouldn't be messing with this right now as an unstable release. And uh, in here, you will see a altitude hold uh, mode here and a position hold mode as well that you can have on. Uh, obviously here you can see that when I am in position hold with AUX4, I am also in altitude hold because this thing is stretched further. Um, that's what I would recommend to have both at the same time, but you don't need it. You can have it on two different switches and have it activate with position hold only, and then you're adjusting the altitude manually or vice versa. If you do go into the CLI, most of the stuff for this is under get auto pilot. So if you just type in get auto, uh, you will be able to see things uh, like your min throttle, max throttle. Uh, you're going to see your gains for the controller for altitude controller and position controller. Also, if you're in here and type in get mag, you will see down here, there's a position hold without magnetometer and you would turn that to on. And in that case, with that being turned on, then you would have to fly forward for a while. Uh, then it calibrates a virtual magnetometer and that virtual magnetometer will then be used in position hold. Um, per the PR reading that, uh, it's not gonna work as well, but honestly, uh, INAV has the same functionality. It works pretty darn good. So I wouldn't, you know, I'd give it a shot for sure. Uh, obviously you wanna be careful uh, with it and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, you have to trigger this to mag, you know, trigger that to on. You have to fly forward for a while before you could uh, turn on position hold and uh, yeah, give it, a, give it a whirl. Well, that will do it. I will drop a link to this PR down below. This is the one that introduced position hold so you can read all more about it. Big, huge thanks to Chris Thompson for introducing altitude hold and position hold to the Betaflight project. And with follow-up encouragement by Lamon and Karate Brat, uh, they're thanked in this post as well. And I know they're very active with... Uh, you know, helping out and um, doing their part for code reviews and test flying and all that kind of good stuff and cheering Chris along. I know this was a lot of work uh, for him and he's been engaged in beta flight for a long time. If you're interested in a little bit more depth on this, check out the link below. I'm going to have a Patreon video. We're going to go through the black box logs that, sh you know, with these flights and showing uh, some of the parameters that you can look at a black box to tune it out a little bit better if you are interested. What are some of the terms made do? There's some low pass filters involved. Just really get into the, the meat of it and uh, how you can really take it to the next level on understanding how position hold works. Please do thank Chris and all the Betaflight devs that work hard on this stuff below. I will also have a link to the Betaflight Patreon if you're interested in that, and you should be. I'm a patron of Betaflight to give back to the, these guys that give so much to the community. See you guys on the next one.